I was borderline flooding the engine trying to get the motor to crank. Then I heard it. I stopped trying to the motor for just a second and realized the motor was not the only thing making noise. There was a howl sounding in the same noise level as the motor. But it was not like a wolf or a dog. It was much more high pitched. Kind of like someone singing a high pitched note non stop and very poorly. My breath shuddered and I was frozen for a long moment. I tried to pinpoint the sound, but it echoed through the trees and was difficult to locate the source. After several moments, I came to my senses and rushed to start the motor to get out of there. I was just about to give it a crank when I noticed something large bobbing in the water, not ten feet from my boat. It was a doom shipped with long spindles of angled moss laid across it thin enough to expose some of the smooth surface below. I tried to let out a scream when I realized what it was, but my throat was too tight with fear and it came out as a horse whine. I have been a pretty avid fisherman ever since I was a little kid. Bass, trout, amberjack, you name it, I have probably caught it. After years of pinching pennies, I was finally able to buy my own boat. It's nothing crazy, but it floats, and I have been able to fish a lot of new places I was not able to get to before. The past six months or so, I have been going to this lake a couple of hours away from my home. It's a hell of a drive, but absolutely worth it. I have caught some monsters in that lake, even caught a 12 pound largemouth. Despite my love of this lake though, I am considering whether or not I should cease coming to it. I pretty much always fish alone, it's my me time, and I very much enjoy the sounds of nature when I'm fishing. The lake is pretty much secluded, so no one ever fishes on the banks. I occasionally see other boats patrolling around, but the area I fish is through some low water areas and high weeds, so I don't think anyone else goes back there. When you have been in the wild for a while, you start to familiarize yourself with the sounds of nature. The croaks of frogs, how squirrels chitter and jump in the branches, the brushing of a hog through bushes. It's not conscious, but it becomes second nature. It's like how you can tell who is walking around your house at the sound and tempo of their footsteps. You get so used to the sounds of nature, you realize how intrusive outside sounds can be. A boat motor passing by at a different part of a lake stands out, or the holler of someone calling to another person is distinctly different and alarming. So when you start to hear new sounds and feel an unfamiliar presence, it's obvious. I almost always go fishing in the morning and get to my spot just as the sun creeps over the horizon. I started to feel like I was not the only one out there. At first it was not much, just a feeling like you are being watched or an odd sound here and there. I thought it might just be the weather changing and my body feeling the difference in the atmosphere without my brain being able to process it. Then things became more apparent that this was not a natural phenomena. Every now and then I would see a shadow in the trees. A couple of times when my back was turned, something like a rock would hit the water close to my boat. I only go out maybe once or twice a week, so it's not like those things were enough to scare me. But then things got worse. One morning I was moving fast, I guess. I got out to the lake about half an hour earlier than I normally do. I did the usual and made it out to my spot. I was kinda excited to see what it looked like in the twilight. 
Almost immediately, I knew something was wrong. Everything felt off. I was not alone enjoying the bliss of nature anymore. The hairs on my neck were standing up and I knew I was being watched. I thought maybe there were some hunters out in the woods, so I called out, but no reply. Instead of fishing, I sat in the front seat of my boat and I used my monocular to peer out into the woods surrounding in the banks. Staying still and making sure to keep all noises to a minimum, I slowly spun around in my 360 chair. My throat was dry and I was waiting for something to jump in front of the small lens I was peering through. My whole body was on the edge and my sense alert. So when I heard a few sticks all crack at once, I whirled around frantically, trying to get a glimpse of something. I still don't know whether I imagined this or not, but I swear I saw a hand wrapped around a tree. It was grey toned, but to be fair, that early in the morning, everything has a grey hue to it. My eye was locked in the place staring at it through the monocular. It was unmoving, very long and thin. The finger stretched nearly halfway across the trunk of the young oak. The flutter of a flock of birds taking off out of the trees scared me so much that I almost fell out of the boat. By the time I had regained my composure and spotted where the hand was again, it was gone. I convinced myself I had seen a vine and the spooky feeling I was experiencing was making my brain convince me it was a hand. Nevertheless, I headed out of my usual spot and fished the rest of the morning in a very open part of the lake much closer to the landing. I even took a week break which was pretty much unheard of from me. But you know how it goes, mowing the lawn and watching ESPN don't scratch that itch quite like fishing does. The next few times I went out to the lake, I tried out some new spots, even rode around in the boat looking for a new secret area, but with no luck. Eventually, I was faced with the fact that the best fishing to be had in that lake was in my old spot. At that point, I would not say I was scared to go there, but I have to admit, I was hesitant. What made me go back was the memories of the good time I had fishing in that secret cove. The sereneness of being the only one out there for hours, it was my little slice of heaven and one bad experience would not keep me away forever. To my surprise, the next few times I went to the spot, everything was great. It was peaceful and quiet just like the old times. I pushed the image of that hand out of my head and enjoyed the blissfulness. But as you know, I would not be telling you all this if that was the last thing that happened. Like I said previously, I usually go fishing early in the morning, but last Saturday I had some light things to do in the morning, so I decided to go in the afternoon. I did not even think twice about it. I had never been to that particular spot in the afternoon, but I had been fishing plenty of times at dusk. Around 4 o'clock, my boat hit the water. I figured I would fish for a couple of hours and be back at the launch before the sunset. For the first 30 minutes, everything was great. I only had a couple of catches, but I was getting bites about every other cast. Then as the sun started to touch the horizon, the mood began to change. The fish stopped biting completely, the wildlife sounds were practically gone, even the wind seemed to stop blowing. I'm telling you, it was dead quiet. Something inside me knew it was not right. The atmosphere was thick with tension. I tried to write it off and kept fishing for a while. The sun reached that point where everything becomes dim, just before real darkness envelops the world and that's when I decided to head back. Honestly, I was feeling creeped out and so I was fumbling with all my stuff trying to tie it down so I could drive back at full speed. My nerves were on edge. It was that feeling that something is right behind you and you just want to jump to get further away from it. Honestly, I was feeling creeped out. So, I was fumbling with all my stuff, trying to tie it down so I could drive back at full speed. My nerves were on edge. It was that feeling that something is right behind you and you just want to jump to get further away from it. I kept whipping my head around 
expecting to see something climbing into my boat. Finally, I had gotten all the posts fastened down and started to crank the engine. No good. Now my boat is a little on the rough side. So this was not an unusual occurrence. It often takes me a few tries to get it going. But with the uneasy feeling in my gut, I was getting frantic. I was bottled and flooding the engine trying to get the motor to crank. Then I heard it. I stopped trying to the motor for just a second and realized the motor was not the only thing making noise. There was a howl sounding at the same noise level as the motor, but it was not like a wolf or a dog. It was much more high pitched, kind of like someone singing a high pitched note non stop and very poorly. My breath shuddered and I was frozen for a long moment. I tried to pinpoint the sound, but it echoed through the trees and was difficult to locate the source. After several moments, I came to my senses and rushed to start the motor to get out of there. I was just about to give it a crank when I noticed something large bobbing in the water, not ten feet from my boat. It was a doomed shipwreck with long spindles of tangled moss laid across it thin enough to expose some of the smooth surface below. I tried to let out a scream when I realized what it was, but my throat was too tight with fear and it came out as a horse whine. The thing I was staring at was a head. Those long strands of moss were actually hair and even though it was too dark to make out a face, I knew it was staring right at me. In panic, I grabbed the first thing I saw and launched it at it. It was my life vest. I missed by a mile in my frantic state and the thing started to wait closer. I cranked the engine and boom, it came to life. The head disappeared with a splash and I whipped the boat around to make a break for the open water. My arms were shaking and luckily I was sitting down because my legs were useless. Looking around as I approached the long straightway of shallow water, I saw something climbing out of the lake. I was getting farther away and it was very dark at this point, so details were tough to make out. It seemed like whatever it was dragged itself onto the bank shoulders first. It was the strangest, most awkward looking thing I've ever seen. The thing's limbs were dragging behind it like dead weight. It awkwardly shifted its weight back and forth to drag itself out of the water, practically digging itself into the mud with its shoulders. My last sight of it was oddly enough its arms. They were entirely too long and came out of the water last. Thin and elongated, they followed the skin and bones being into the forest. I tried my hardest to get a look at the hands, but I was too far away and it was too dark. As I made my way down to the thin open pass through the tall grass, I just knew it would jump out from the grass and into my boat. But despite my worst wishes, I was in the clear. I made it safely back to the dock and left maybe for the last time. My mind has been constantly conflicted on this experience I have just shared with you. It's honestly hard to believe my own memories. I keep trying to rationalize my experience. Maybe what I saw crawling out of the lake was actually just a tangle of roots and the darkness and the motion of the boat made me think it was moving. Maybe the head I saw was just a piece of driftwood and I spoke myself into believing it was a head. I don't know. I want to believe myself but I have never believed in any monsters or any legends. It's been a week and so far I have kept my experience private. I don't need my friends and family thinking I'm an old coot who's losing his mind. I'll have to decide if I want to continue fishing on my own. But I had to get this out. I had to tell someone.